So thank you for coming. Um, my name is Chris and uh, we especially do want to thank uh, Football New South Wales because uh, we wanted, when, when it came to wanting to bring this Pixlot technology into the country, um, my office is just up the road and I live locally uh, and when it comes to sort of finding a location that was really going to help us get to know it, launch it and then help sell it, um, there really isn't better than the, the number one sort of trafficked uh, football pitch in the country. Um, so uh, we're VPA and uh, again many thanks to Football New South Wales. Uh, give you a little bit of heads up on who we are and uh, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, a bit more about the technology. So VPAs are the two of us, myself, uh, I'm Chris Dredge, uh, Luke McCoy over there. Um, so Luke actually founded VPA a number of years ago and has been doing this sports capture stuff for a long time. So he started and as the, uh, when VPA started, they were bringing in and still are um, sports cams and masts which gave sporting clubs the opportunity to have an elevated recording platform, um, joystick controlled. So about 12 months ago we got into conversation because I knew I had the Pixelot product um, and I wanted to bring it in to Australia but I needed somebody that, was, that knew the sporting market well. Luke had been a customer of mine for some time. In the end we decided that it made more sense for us just to get together and so I joined VPA as a shareholder um, and brought my technological background um, and Luke brought his, uh, his understanding of the market and, uh, and that's kind of where we ended up. So um, every organisation sort of needs a nerd and, every, and uh, somebody that sort of knows where to use that technology. I'm the nerd. Um, so the question, uh, and it's a very good one to ask, is why are we here? Um, so we think we're here because we want to make the most of the games. Uh, we want to make the most of the sporting club that you're with or the content that you have access to. Um, and we want to be able to do something with that more than just let it happen and it's gone. Um, so we want to be able to capture those and we want that to be consistent uh, in quality and we know and if you've been around sports capture before that you will know that it's great while the guy on the camera who was probably the guy that got sent off last week um, is paying attention and until that girl walks past and he loses focus the next thing you know you're looking at the goals and the plays up the other end and then he's back on it. So by moving to a technology based capture we try and smooth a lot of that stuff out. Right now we want to stop the birds flying past. Every now and then a big one goes past and the cameras follow but they will iron that out in the software. But for the most part it's pretty consistent capture. Um, we are able to do this using technology so we don't have to use highly trained people. Um, so you don't have a cost in time and in someone being on holidays of being able to achieve this outcome. Um, and then we want to be able to capture that footage and record it so you can use it. You can use it for putting it online, you can use it for review. Um, by extension, the next part of this is how you extend your reach. Again, be you a sporting association or a content owner. Um, you can live stream these games or stream them after the fact. Um, you can generate revenue through sponsorship opportunities, through graphic overlay, and we're going to cover some of this stuff as we go past. How do we do that? So this is the Australian launch um, of this world leading technology called Pixelot. And I, I almost want a round of applause there because that's some of my best PowerPoint work ever. Um, so, but we'll move on. Now, we're going to break this up into two spots. We're going to talk a little bit about the technology that's my job and then Luke is going to talk a little bit about the application. Um, so I'll launch into just, to, just to, to give you an understanding of what's sitting behind what, uh, how then we're going to use it which is the really key part. So Pixelot is a camera stitching technology. What that means is we have a multi camera camera head. There's a good example of one just sitting up in the back of the room over there, the little white cylindrical barrel and on your way out about right on the halfway line if you look up to the roof there's one hanging out of the roof looking over field two. That is the camera head that's currently live. The stream that you're seeing over there is coming off that camera head right now. Um, so what is it about? It's about being able to use those multiple cameras and capture the whole field the whole time. This is what it looks like when we capture it. So we capture a panorama. So it was playing on that computer but we'll just have to restart it. We were playing a panorama over here which is the file that we capture. So it just gives you an idea of when we're looking at um, what is it that we record we record the whole field, the whole game. So 
we have one, once we have that field it gives us a number of options and this is where the real smarts kick in it's in the auto production part so for this section I just wanted to show you what we capture no that is not an under sixes game where they've all had red cordial this is just running a little bit faster just to, to just to give you an idea the panoramas at real at normal speed they're pretty boring to watch because you've got so much to look at so I just sped that one up sort of 20 times and clipped a bit out of the game um, but it just gives you an idea that we've captured this in real time and we have this for all time. So the number of applications for capturing the whole field the whole time are huge. Not the least of which is when all the cameras are following the front part of play and a couple of guys get into a brawl at the other end, then we've captured that. Uh, if your players are out of position, we've captured that. So it's very handy to have the whole field the whole time. But that's not really what you're going to use in a day-to-day -day basis. What you're going to use in a day-to-day -day basis partly depends on your application. So there are two views that we go, we use when we're recording. One is a tactical view. I've got a, just a clip here. Um, so this is a tactical view. The tactical view is designed to record in a wide shot and try and keep as many of the players as it can, if not all, um, in shot the whole time. So what, you can see the shot staying very wide um, and, uh, and so this is what we actually do for the first grade, the under 18s and the under 20s. This is the shot that we, we use for them when we're recording uh, their games because their coaches want to see the big picture. Um, and there, I have just put a couple of little edits in there, hence that little crossfade you saw. Just a snapshot, some of the pictures. Now, I'll come back to the cool part about this because there's no cameraman involved. This is just software extracting a portion of that panorama that I showed you before. So we still have the panorama, but the software is automatically extracting that particular section um, because we've requested the tactical view. So I'll jump over. The other one is the broadcast. Now this is the, the, what we're using at the moment uh, where, when we do the under 13s, 14s, 15s and 16s. We're using the broadcast view. Now this is a little bit different and you'll see this here. It's a little bit tighter. So it's not as wide, it's happy to drop players off the edges. And again, it's designed, this is a little bit more of a live stream, sort of parent oriented view. Now, it is entirely plausible that you could use this view for an analysis tool. It just doesn't give you the width that the tactical view does. So it's, thus far for our, our client, which is uh, GHFA, um, they've, they've been quite happy with the combination, the tactical view that works well for the, uh, for the higher grades and the, the, they're not as in-depth. Wait, wait for it, goal. Right. It took me ages to find a clip with a goal. Good job, people. He scores that every time I watch. Um, so, uh, you know, it took me a long time to find a part of the clip that had a goal in it too. I was very excited. Um, so uh, we give you the option of whether you take the wider tactical view or the close-up um, the, the close broadcast view. What's really cool about that is this. There is no cameraman involved. And this is what really sets this technology apart from, from the traditional methods that have been used. So when we go to record a weekend's games, typically this, when Spirit play here, they play seven games back to back, 13s right through to first. It takes me about 20 minutes to schedule the recordings because the games, generally speaking, start on time. We run the recording up until 10 minutes before the next game starts. On Sunday night, I'll log in and just start pushing the files to wherever they need to be uploaded to. So the, the 13s to 16s, we upload them just so that the coaches can access them. 18s, 20s and first grade, we upload to a thing called Huddle, um, which is a sports code sort of, uh, and, and Luke will talk more about that in the application section. Um, so, once those live streams um, are, are created, once those files, whether it was a tactical view, that's not where the game ends. We've still got more that we can do and there's this whole level of optional control. So over here, right now on that screen is actually we're showing the live stream, but on the laptop just closer to me, we actually have our manual camera control, um, which is live right now on this field. So from that laptop with that joystick, I can control which part of the panorama is being displayed out the live stream. So the live stream as you, on the TV, that's about 40 seconds behind, that's normal for live streaming. But if you are displaying that content into a file to record it for later review, 
The manual control means that you don't have to be set in just an automated mode. So in a training environment, you can actually manually override where the software thinks you want to look. Now the other application for that of course is the two primary um, automatic production algorithms we have are currently a basketball and football. We do have hockey, rugby, netball, ice hockey, um, and a few other rectangle sports that are under development, but those four are the next ones. So those automated production algorithms are still in the development stage. Um, so in the interim, we can manually control where the camera looks, um, rather than automatically control where the camera looks, and when those algorithms are released, we'll be able to do the same thing as we do with football and basketball. That is, automatically capture the games. Um, we also have a piece of software on the second side, you'll see the Clipper. So the Clipper's super cool. The Clipper takes the panorama, takes this file that we're showing over here on the computer, and it allows you to clip sections out of that panorama in the normal sort of 16 by 9 TV. Now why this is cool is because we've captured the whole field the whole time, if you've captured a training episode, you can take a clip from one end of the field, and then you can back up, and at the same time you can then create a clip from the other end of the field that was happening at exactly the same time. So normally you couldn't do that unless you had two cameras. But we've captured the whole field the whole time. So you can move in time, that is at what time did it happen, and in space, where on the field did it happen, within the one panorama and create multiple clips all around the same and overlapping time, enabling you to efficiently look at your training um, session on the whole field and determine uh, the sort of outcome you're looking for, who was working hard, who wasn't. I know that when it came to training in my very brief career as a terrible hockey player, training was not high on the, high on the agenda, so I probably wouldn't have featured uh, all too often in the videos. So just wanted to uh, show you, this is a little bit around what the clipper can do. So if you have a look in the bottom, that's the panorama. So this is a file that's been recorded by the, uh, by the Pixelot system. This is exactly the same sort of file that we're showing down there. Um, I've just put it into a little bit of slow-mo just, uh, just, just to slow it so we can see what was going on. Um, I'll just run that again actually. Um, so we've got the downstairs is where the whole file and the upstairs is what we're recording. So the Clipper allows us to um, create, now this is a game file rather than training, but I means I could recreate the way the game was watched or I could in a training session look at different parts and create different recordings. Up in the, uh, the far corner up there's a list of the different recordings and we can export those, send them to people, upload them to online, those sorts of things. Um, the manual camera control, which I didn't really go into too much detail because we have it live here, um, is much the same idea but it's in real time. And uh, we can have a look at, um, you have control over the camera and where it's looking and wherever it is looking is what we are recording as the broadcast file. As a, we're still recording the pano, we always record the pano, but then we're recording the broadcast file. So just prior to jumping into the application, there are three models of Pixelot. Now it's probably worth knowing, um, what we've installed here is the S series, this is the standard series. 95% of Pixelot systems around the world are the standard series. Um, this is a camera head and a controlling PC that allows us to capture or stream and in most cases we're, we're moving towards a model whereby we capture the panorama locally and we stream the broadcast output. We stream the 16x9 and that will be in either broadcast or tactical. Um, we have two other models that are substantially uh, more um, capable and we have the, the professional production model in the on back on show over here. Uh, so what this is, this is kind of cool, um, it takes that panorama and it allows you to have a multi-camera production from the single camera head. So it allows you to, um, to, to define several camera shots, presets, but it's all coming from the one camera head all looking at the one panorama and you can then cut between those shots as if it were a multi-camera production. So it, it, it's what takes a single camera production where it's all fluid and it's all the one, but it now it allows you to have a, have a shot on this goalie and a shot on this goalie. The automatic production can be doing its thing, but you can do a replay of a part of the field that you were not watching at the time. So you may be following the ball and then somebody decides to jump the fence and run across the field and you want to replay that, because you have captured the whole field, 
we can replay that section of the field where none of the cameras were actually looking at the time because we have it in the recording. Um, so there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff you can do within the production model. We have another in the P series, which is the professional series called coaching. Now this can be a little bit misleading. Um, so the coaching series allows you to really, um, to, to uh, create really high quality clips from, uh, from the panorama. Now the clipper allows us to do this um, from the normal on the standard series. Uh, so there is this coaching series is really targeted at very high end professional teams. A couple of the EPL type teams are playing with this kind of technology, but it really is targeted at that level. It's the, we, we've, we're finding so far that we think we can achieve most of the outcomes we need um, from the standard series and in uh, the odd occasion the professional series for the production. That's the technology. So that's very helpful for you to understand what it is, um, but what really matters is what do we think we can do with it and how do you, we think you guys can use it? Um, and that's something that once we're done talking, um, that we'll, we'll welcome some conversation on one-on-one. -on -one. But right now, I'm gonna get Luke to come on up. Um, and Luke's gonna talk you through a little bit about what we're doing with the kit that we've got installed here um, and what it might be uh, that we can do in the future. So, Luke. Thanks, Matt.